has to do a lot with starting up a business and not jumping with walls or being able to jump over walls in order to achieve what you really have to do. And I think that's the most important lesson that you're, you should be learning in these three weeks or four weeks or five weeks that you've been having this, huh? this course, that you have to be able to overcome those barriers in order to achieve huh? your market. Something also very important that Marilena was telling you, and I think that we both have and that you all have, is that we come from countries that have a lot of opportunities. We, I come from Mexico, I was born and raised in Mexico, lived there all my life, I moved here to the U.S. 10 years ago. And being able to understand the possibilities and the needs that there are in many parts of the world is, are very important for you to succeed. And being able to think outside of your own country, outside of your regular territory, will open a lot of possibilities and make you be a lot more successful than if you're thinking only in, in one particular country. And you being here right now is the first very big step in starting to think like that. So on that, congratulations, and you're starting on the right foot. Well, let me tell you a little bit of my story. I have always liked eh, entrepreneurship. I can say that I've been starting different sort of businesses since I can remember, since doing little things that I would sell to my friends or to my parents' friends and I would go around the neighborhoods trying to sell things and trying to do different things. It has always been my, my passion, something that I've always liked is the startup of a company. You know, the, the feeling of having nothing and starting doing something and realizing that you're, you have the potential of having something grow and make from something non-existent something tangible and real. That's something, that's a pleasure that really mm -hmm is interesting to have. I studied law in Mexico City, never wanting to be a lawyer. I, it was something that I definitely did not want to do, but I considered that I would be better prepared studying law and being a lawyer and then doing an MBA than if I studied just business administration, just of doing something like that. Back then there weren't so many specialties like you have, you have right now. So I, I did that, I, and during my fifth year of college, uh, I came back from a trip eh, in Europe and a friend of mine who had been my partner for many years said, you know what, I spoke to one of my, my friends and we have a good opportunity to start a painting and roofing and, and construction eh, company. Do you have 50 pesos with you, which was probably, uh, it's $55 from there, probably $50 eh, in the sense. I opened my wallet and said, yes, I do. Eh? So I gave him the huh, $50, and that was the capital that we started our first company. And it was really good. We started really well, because what you needed was work. Hard work and, and really wanting to find clients and finding business opportunities. And we found a really good opportunity starting to sell. And, and we grew, 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 grew very, nice, very nicely in the different market. We were making a lot more money than what our peers in college were making and working for a law firm or working for a different huh? type of company, so we were very happy. But again, we had the feeling of, now what's next? I think it's something very important for you to be able to realize and understand is there are certain businesses that have certain potential. Not every single business can take you to wherever you want to take it. And this was one of those businesses that needed so much labor that did not depend on you. And what it was not very reliable labor that I realized that it wasn't going to be growing very much. So we started looking for different things. And at some point, uh, me having a meeting with another friend of mine uh, for, for some tacos for dinner, uh, we realized that there was an opportunity to do a magazine. So we said, you know what, let's do the magazine. And we bid it and we started doing a magazine. And, and that was 24 years ago. And we started doing the in-flight magazine for Aeromexico Airlines. It was really nice magazine, and having completely an experience on having how to do a magazine was probably our biggest advantage. Why? Because we were able to get the best editor, the best designer, the best photographer. We made our numbers, and we realized that we could afford a better paper than what other people had. We were able to, to realize that we could have 
a better product in general to what was it on the market, where the companies who were already established already had all those uh, conflicting interests or, or, or already those bad eh, habits of how they had to do it. So being completely fresh and with zero knowledge of that industry, we were able to do it. But, but going back to the part of financing, which is, I think it's your, your important module on, on, on what you're going to be learning this week. For that business, we needed a little bit more money. So financing in, in Mexico was not that easily obtained. It was not something like you could go to the bank and say, this here's my business plan, give me some money. That didn't exist. Eh? And I don't think it exists anywhere. Eh? So, so whenever they tell you that, don't worry, it does not happen, don't expect it. Eh? So, but there were credits for cars. So you, if you had a car, you could, if you were going to buy a car, you would be able to get credits. So my, my friend, my partner, he was finishing college and his father gave him a new car as a graduation price. So we went to the bank and said, okay, I'm going to buy that car that's brand new. So with them, they, they lent us money, they lent me money to buy his car, and, and with that money we used it as an investor, as, a, as the investment to start the publishing, the, the publishing company. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say here is you have to be very creative, and, and if, if you have a, a good idea and you have a good product eh, that you think it can be successful, don't limit yourself as to not obtaining it and not doing it because you, do, you cannot get the proper financing and you cannot get eh, the money that you need in order to do it. What's really important is that you're creative, that you're able to find eh, ways around it and you're able to find different ideas as to how to achieve the, the, the business as it is as important to how to achieve or how to obtain the money that you need to be able to get the business going. So it, both of them are as important and both of them require a lot, a lot of creativity in order for you to be able to do it. Well, from there on I started a different, uh, we kept on going with the magazine and one of the things that happened with the magazine is that I did not like the editorial. When I saw the editorial for our magazine, I said, you know what, I would sit with the editors and I said, I don't like it, I think it's boring, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like the other. And this one, sometimes they told me, what do you like? And I said, you know what, I like the magazine, it's called, it's called Entrepreneur. I would read it sometimes, I would buy it at the airports, I wouldn't be able to subscribe or anything, but I would like it, I would, whenever I see it, I buy it, and I liked it because it was very practical, very useful, things were very fresh, and I would enjoy doing it. And the other magazine that I liked at that time was, was Time Magazine. I was a subscriber from Time since I was probably 13 or 14 years old. I would receive it every week and it would keep me up to date as to what was happening in the world. Uh, right now you're able to know what's happening in the world on your phone eh? on a minute basis, but back then a week was very good to be, be timed. Eh? Well, at the end of a couple of years, well, after the second year that we had the magazine, I had, I had to go to Los Angeles to see something of the TV some board. And Entrepreneur Magazine was based in the same city that I was going for different reasons. So I called up the guys from Entrepreneur Magazine. I sat down with them. I, I met with the chairman. And within 30 minutes, we closed the deal. We shook hands. And we've been very good friends ever since. And we started doing the magazine in Mexico in Spanish for Entrepreneur Magazine. And again, the financing was very simple. We said, we're going to go 50-50, you're going to put, in that case we said, well, you're going to put 150,000 of your products into it, I'll put that, and whenever we reach eh, zero, we'll sit down and we'll decide eh, what we have to do and what, how we have to eh, keep on going. Fortunately, we never reached that moment and it started, eh, it started funding itself and we were able to continue with the magazine. Eventually, we started representing also Newsweek in Mexico, and we grew to several magazines. Right now, we have 11 magazines and five websites in which we publish in different sectors, mainly tourism, business, and uh, lifestyle. So it has been a very interesting uh, business there. Oh, something also very important, and the part of the financing that we were talking about, 
what, 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 well, I, my part for the partnership, I put I was selling it on the car. But obviously, money started running out. Hmm? So we started the magazine in, in, in August, and we pretty much had cash until December, January. And fortunately, in December, we were able to get enough prepayments from clients in order to get that get it going, and we never required huh, formal financing or, or more huh, or a different investor to come into the company because with the money of the same clients, we were able to to finance ourselves and we were able, able to to continue. With so, so again, the message is: you have to be creative, and you have to find ways in which you can uh, obtain your resources without trying to uh, dilute yourself or trying to sell yourself if it's not necessary. Uh, well, after that, I, we, we, I started different other businesses. We, I, I started a couple of car dealerships uh, in Mexico. We ended up with three car dealerships in, in Mexico City and in the surroundings. We were also franchisees for KFC, Pizza Hut, Burger King, and Arby's. And we had 35 stores in Mexico, which uh, Tricom, the owner of the brand, eventually bought from us in 2001. And I decided that I wanted to do something else. I wanted that new blood or to that have new rush of, of new ideas. And we moved to the United States. Uh, my kids were at the right age in which we could move. My oldest one over there, he, he was six years old. So he was a very good age for us to move. And we decided to move here to Florida, over to West Palm Beach. And we've been living here for nine years. And I've started a couple of businesses here. One of them that we have right now is, is Jamba Juice, which we purchased eh, a year and a half ago. Again, with a, a very interesting way of, of getting the of financing it through the corporate headquarters because they were corporate owned stores that were not doing very good. So we were able to do an offer that was sufficiently good for them and very good for us in terms of being able to to adapt and to and to make it work on a win-win situation. I think that for every possibility if you're not in a win-win situation you're really not going to be able to, to make it and to make it successful. Mm? And, and, and to get into this point of being successful, I would like to show you two different things that I think could work, are very important for you to remember. It's always been said that for you to be able to learn something out of the whole period, you end up remembering only one thing. So out of your five week period, I hope you can remember one particular thing, and I hope if that's if it's one thing that you're going to remember, it's the saying that in Spanish it sounds very well, huh? in English the translation is not as clear, but it says the difference between the one who makes it and those who don't is that the one who makes it did it. The only way of not <laughs> succeeding is not doing it. If you don't try it, if you don't go ahead and really do it, there's no point. But you'll never make it. Eh? So you really have to try it in order to do it. If you are entrepreneurs and you want to start and you want to have a successful business, you have to be able to do it, take the step and make whatever is necessary for you to succeed. But you have to take the decision of doing it and in taking that particular step. And, and now going back into a little bit of, of the financing and starting your own business. Excuse me, can you say it in Spanish? Huh? You say that it's all yes. Better. In Spanish is la diferencia entre el que lo hace y el que no lo hace es el que lo hace lo hizo. <laughs> so it, it's a little bit more, huh? it sounds more, huh? yeah. uh, it rhymes a lot better. <laughs> but the point is, is that, no? That, and it, 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 it plays the words really nice. Huh? But that's, a, what's, that's what's important, that we really have to focus and we really have to accept that the only way of not doing it, or not being successful, is by not trying. I think that Nike copied me on just doing it. <laughs> because I thought of it first. <laughs> and, and reading over one of our, our magazines here of Entrepreneur, I came up with this phrase from Sir Richard Branson. I'm sure you all know who 
who Sir Richard Branson is. I think he's one of the greatest entrepreneurs alive at this moment, one of the greatest huh? innovators of our times. And, and something that I like here very much, and I'm going to read it first, is all startups should be thinking, what frustrates me and how can I make it better? It may be a small thing or it might be a big thing, but that is the best way to think. If you think like that, it is very likely that you will build a very successful business. So as you're starting to think right now on your business, on your project, on your the financing, and we can go from the broadest to the huh, specific. What bothers you, what frustrates you that does not work in order for you to be able to obtain it? And for that, I think that you have to think and you have to imagine the different win-win situations as to how it has to be done. And, and, and in order to achieve that, I'm going to be able to use that. I think that it's very important to think with different hats. <laughs> so, first of all, I want to have my, my hat of an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, what am I looking for? What type of investment, what type of business, what type of company I have to be thinking. And whenever you're presenting a project to a financing company or to a fund or to an angel investor or whoever you're thinking about, you have to be able to have your hat on and think, okay, how is he thinking and what are his objectives and what is he thinking about in order for you to be able to understand his thought, his way of thoughts and you being able to transmit what is needed by him. Mm -hmm. Two, if you're the entrepreneur, you have to think like the entrepreneur, but if you're thinking that you're going to present to a let's change it to a venture capitalist, okay, I have to change my concept completely to them. What what is a venture capitalist looking for? Return. Return on Return. investment. Return on investment. Does he care if the business is successful? Does he care if you have to work 18 hours a day? Does he care huh, if, if the product works or doesn't work? He cares about a return on investment. Mm -hmm. If you're proposing to friends and family, <laughs> what do they care? You. 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 They care about you. They're thinking more about my success eh? and they're thinking how can I help my friend, how can I help my family, and how can we be successful together. I'm not saying that if you're presenting a, to friends and family, you're going to be able to tell them, you know what, huh? the return is not important, or I might not be able to give you these guarantees. But they're, they're looking to completely different objectives as to the objective that you're thinking about, or the objective that you would be presenting to a venture capitalist. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're presenting your plans and whenever you're, you're, you're thinking on how do you have to project and how do you have to prepare for a specific eh, presentation for financing, in this case of financing, you always have to think eh, about eh, the person who you're presenting and what will his objectives be in order for you to be able to transmit those and to be able to satisfy those particular parts. Mm? But going back to the, eh, the, the part of, 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 the, of the phrase of Sir Richard eh, Branson, if we're talking about what frustrates me as a client and how do I have to transform an industry or how do I have to transform a service? There is no better way of being successful than by being able to satisfy something that frustrates a specific group of people. I think that the example that Marielena gave us a couple of minutes ago is very clear. Was there a were, were the companies in, in Latin America, were they satisfied with a computer service eh, distribution that was out there? Were they satisfied with the software that was out there in Spanish? They were not. So she was able to satisfy that frustration that they did not have that product and she was able to be very successful at it. Eh? And she was able to do two things. She was able to satisfy the needs of a client, she was able to satisfy the needs of a, let's see what we have the other ones, eh? 
here, eh? The <laughs> supply chain, eh? You were able to simplify the supply chain in a way that they cannot do themselves. So by having the supply chain satisfied eh? on behalf for IBM, she was able to be very successful in her business. But whenever she presented her case, to IBM, she identified something that frustrated them, that they were not able to satisfy by themselves, and therefore she had a very viable need. Huh? So thinking about the ways in which you have to satisfy different persons and being able to satisfy the frustration, the needs of different groups, and whenever you're able to put the hat on, on who you're going to be serving, who you're going to be presenting, it's very important and you will be able to satisfy your own needs, which is being able to be successful in your own business. Obviously, I think that the most important one is eh, the one of the clients, the customers, because they're the ones who I have the money eh, and I am the one who buys. So by satisfying the needs of the customers, I think that's at least eh, a 60% of our needs. But if we're not able to satisfy eh, our uh, supply chain, our distribution channels. We're able to satisfy our investors, our workforce, and ourselves as entrepreneur. We will not be able to be successful in a round, uh, rounded situation in which everything works. So whenever you think about a win-win, if you're able to make that a win-win and everybody's happy, that's the best way to have your company being successful and by satisfying a need it's not being satisfied out there in the market. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess eh? that's out of the past, eh? and I think we can be good for, eh? for some questions. Eh?